Good evening, everyone. I'm Leah Cooper with your JCN News for this Thursday, June 20th. The Bahamas remains at Tier 1 on this year's U.S. Trafficking in Person report, and this having demonstrated serious and sustained efforts during the reporting period. Those efforts, noted the report, includes passing a national action plan, increasing funding for victim assistance and anti-trafficking prevention, elevating national anti-trafficking planning to the office of the Prime Minister, and instituting an anti-trafficking course into the training curriculum of the Immigration Department. Now, while the government meets the minimum standards, the report points out, authorities initiated significantly fewer investigations and inconsistently applied screening procedures to vulnerable populations. Credible allegations of corruption also raise concerns Credible allegations of corruption also raise concerns about vulnerabilities of potential trafficking victims during the reporting period. That said, here's what's recommended. The U.S. suggests the Bahamas increase efforts to investigate, prosecute, convict, and appropriately punish traffickers. And that includes officials complicit with sex or labor trafficking. There's also the suggestion to robustly implement the victim identification and referral protocol to identify victims of sex and labor trafficking, especially among vulnerable groups, including Haitians, Venezuelans, and other migrants. Provide vulnerable individuals with assistance prior to, during, and after screening for trafficking is also on the list, as well as providing language and cultural interpretation in screening and trauma-informed protective services for vulnerable populations, particularly in lesser known languages such as Creole and Spanish. There's a further need to increase victim-centered training for prosecutors, judges, and police on the Trafficking in Persons Act and collecting corroborative evidence to support victim testimony, increase grassroots outreach to potential trafficking victims among vulnerable groups in partnership with non-governmental organizations, and strengthen engagement with officials involved in anti-trafficking activities in other countries in the region. Human trafficking is said to be the most heinous crimes on earth. Well, the Minnis administration plans to invest up to $170 million in a Solarize project, which will see the establishment of commercial solar operations throughout the country. We propose to expand small-scale solar production here in New Providence. Our goal is to capitalize on the makeup of our archipelago of islands by generating a substantial amount of solar energy on our family islands, which have ample land and relatively low population. The move in this direction follows the government last year spending a whopping $761 million on oil imports for local consumption. The Prime Minister is pretty optimistic this could be reduced with solar energy. Family island solar generation will have a significant impact on the islands on which it is employed, deployed. This will reduce the cost of electricity nationwide as the level of effective subsidies to those islands by BPL will decrease when smaller generating plants with limited economies of scale do not have to be utilized as much. Shadow Minister for Health, Senator Dr. Michael Darrell, strongly refuting allegations regarding the Princess Margaret Hospital's children's ward renovations. It was during his wrap-up in the 2019-2020 budget debate in the House of Assembly yesterday that Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis hit out at the former administration, charging that it prioritize funding a Bahamas Junkanoo Carnival rather than renovating the children's ward. Citing a letter dated Wednesday, June 19th of this year, Dr. Darvel used it as proof that the Prime Minister lied and misled Parliament on the issue. The truth of the matter is the contract for the children's ward was awarded on October 2016 to guarantee construction company for exterior works, which included the roof and window replacement at a cost of $379,478 and the exterior work was completed in July 2017. 
It's important to point out that the exterior of the building and the works necessary had to be done first before the interior work could begin. The PLP loss office in May 2017. The completion of the children's ward was therefore and remains the responsibility of the current Minister of Health and the Free National Movement. And he added that judging from that letter, the Minnesota administration has done nothing to make improvements to the ward. The repairs of the children's ward had nothing to do with Carnival. And the debacle, however, has everything to do with neglect by the Free National Movement and the Minister of Health failure to do his job. Well, the Prime Minister's wrap-up concentrated heavily on the Free National Movement's track record while in office against what he condemned as the neglect, mismanagement, and corrupt practices of the Progressive Liberal Party. And much to the dismay of the opposition, who in turn has slammed the Prime Minister's four-hour-plus address as falling flat with bold-faced lies. The party referenced Dr. Minnis claim that the PLP government reduced scholarship allocations as for what it felt as a disparaging reference to the father of the nation to score cheap political points. The PLP said this was instead nothing short of despicable. According to PLP leader Philip Davis, critical issues like the increasing cost of living, stagnant wages, tax hikes, separatism, cronyism, self-dealing, a refusal to pay contractors, and a dogged pursuit of an elusive fiscal deficit target have all contributed to misery, discontent, and dissatisfaction. The opposition has chalked up the Prime Minister's contribution as essentially recycled material from the past two budget communications. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.